All right, as an introduction to assignment three, remember that you can always find assignment sheets, one page descriptions under your course modules. This assignment is our most commercial photography assignment, but it doesn't mean you have to use it that way. And I call it the effective object project. And it is all about making something look as engaging to the eye as possible. So inspired by advertising, fashion, food, product photography, we will attempt to use that commercial viewpoint, those techniques, to communicate your own concept of fine art by making an object that has a lot of potential to be visually engaging, it means you can look at it from multiple points of view and find interest, and you should try to engage your viewer's eyes with your use of lighting, color, composition to bring out those qualities as well as texture, contrast, all the things we've talked about so far. So we're going to talk about multiple types of setups. Ways for you to control lighting, ways for you to control the composition. This is the first project where you are not allowed to crop your exposures. So you're going to have to use the native composition of your camera. To see some student examples of this, we can go to the to the class photo bucket and these past student examples. And the first thing we're going to do are thumbnail sketches, trying to compose our object in different ways. Maybe lit differently, maybe posed differently, maybe both. We'll get an exposure that controls lighting, controls for uh, focus. You can see a very open aperture here. So it's about an F2, so you only have a few millimeters actually in focus. And then we'll process it to really bring it out the color, the, the composition, the contrast. And we'll also learn how to balance out the white. So we'll use channel mixer to get to a pure white. So that the temperature of your lighting, which is often kind of outside of your control, whether you're using natural light or, or artificial light, doesn't become so important. So this is just some little paint cans shot with a, a nice use of of aperture for limited focus and then brought out through processing. Color is the easiest thing to process to bring out in digital photography. Here a family or a necklace. Get those textures. Here a little piece of Lego track. Here are some hair clips. So on and on and on. Notice that the shadows become a big part of the composition, but can also be edited out. It depends what you're going for. Sometimes the shadows might take over a lot of the background. Sometimes they're very minimal. But composition is our main goal here, to really engage the eye movement. So we have to learn about that. So my object that I'm going to do for this demo is this. It's a little piece of, of burled wood, kind of knotted, and no spiders have climbed out in quite a while, so I think it's ready to shoot. Okay? The reason I like it, it's small, it's easy to pose, it also has just a lot of things going on. It looks like a seahorse this way. <laughs> Head, something like that. All right. So I'm going to use this, and I'm going to pose it in different ways and try to draw sketches, right. much like these that we see. And I'm going to be inspired by some of these compositional photos that are, are more about using the formal element of composition to make something exciting than anything else. This uses diagonal composition. Why? Because diagonals are more interesting than horizontals and verticals. Horizontals and verticals slow eye movement. So let me, I want a, a minimum of five thumbnails. Five is usually enough. You have to draw them within the format of your camera. So my camera has roughly this format. But I can choose whether I want to compose it on a portrait format, taller than it is wide, or on a landscape format, wider than it is tall. So I roughly want to match my camera. Some of your cameras are longer. Some of them are, are more square than this. And I look at my object, and I'm looking for different directions with which to shoot it. You know, do I want to shoot it 
on its side like that so it looks like a heart? Do I want to shoot it from the top so it looks kind of narrow? You know, which direction? And then the other way, that's the point of view. The other thing I want to do is decide how much of the space will it fill? And will it fill a corner? Will it fill the center? Will it fill most of the space, half of the space? And you just get started. You kind of find an interesting viewpoint. But now I know I'm trying to fill it within a portrait format. So I'll start with just centering it. And it's an interesting enough object that it's pretty compelling, even just centered. Right? But now for this, I might try, OK, what if I just put it in this corner? Your sketches do not need to be good as long as you understand them. Okay, so this is what we might call a central composition. This is what we would call asymmetrical or off-center. Right? This is asymmetrical too. If you split it in half, the two sides don't match, but it's balanced side to side, right? Whereas this is not balanced side to side. But what's nice is that all this empty space, because of the diagonal, might get activated by this. And if I shoot it with a shadow, ooh, maybe that shadow stretches at a diagonal like that, that can make that all pretty interesting. This, the shadow might do some interesting things, or it might hurt. But the one thing, the one rule that I'm always going to follow because I'm trying to engage eye movement is to avoid horizontals and verticals. Because those slow down the eye. So moving the eye at different speeds using diagonals, and curves, even if your object is just a Rubik's cube, you know, setting it at the right angle so that your eye really moves around it, it's important to avoid horizontals and verticals with dynamic, dynamic eye movement. It's why cars are always tilted at an angle and ads instead of just flat. But the other thing we can play with, this is kind of another general rule of dynamic composition, avoid dead center even though it was kind of my first instinct, and I like a lot of photos that play with the center. But the reason it's called dead center in terms of fine art composition is that I'm going to map out what eye movement looks like. Is that this is how the eye works. When it looks at a blank space, it first goes dead center. And if something's there, it doesn't go anywhere else. It stays in the center. So if I map the eye movement here, I start here, my eye kind of wanders around the edges, and then it leaves. That's the eye movement I get out of this piece. So I've wasted a lot of compositional space with stuff that the eye will never see of my viewer. Whereas here, it doesn't get anything there. It might scan the corners really quick, this is happening in, in microseconds. An item of contrast catches it, and so the eye starts to follow this, and then it might follow along with the shadow, and then ultimately, it will leave. We will always leave, whether we're left-handed or right-handed, in a Western country, Western European country, we will leave out of the, the right corner. So we want to play with this eye movement and we want to set up focal points and areas of engagement so that instead of looking like this, we can get it to go all over the place before it leaves. You know, to see it two or three times and think about it in different ways all in one viewing. So now with that goal, a difficult goal, let me try some more compositions. So if I make it vertical, how do I really get the eye interested? Well, maybe I'm just going to ring around the center. 
stay pretty close to this edge but not quite touching it have it loop around like this kind of a yin yang thing <laughs> empty space balanced by form yeah maybe what if I have it kind of leaning towards me here I'm gonna you don't always have to draw your box first but make sure you do draw your box for these I'm going to start by drawing my shape, and then I'm going to draw the box around it. Because first I want to put down the, the point of view, the angle I'm going to view it at. So it kind of looks like that. And now I can try different boxes around it. To maybe keep it more engaging. So let's look at these two. Here, the eye starts dead center, obviously nothing there, but it's immediately going to go close to the center. And this allows it to go against its natural tendency, which is to leave out the right, and it will get it to follow up and around before it leaves. So I at least get half the composition covered this way. And that's pretty good. This one starts in the center. It's obviously going to follow this up from the center, it's going to go around, follow through, and then maybe get out here. So that's the best so far in terms of, of long eye movement in my estimation. Now how could I use a shadow to extend those? And now this becomes a lighting sketch. Not that you're always in complete control of your lighting, but let's see. So the problem with this one was that it stayed only on this side of the page. So what if I could get the shadow to like faintly hook up this way? Right? Would that be enough to get the eye to get more interested over here? Maybe so. And then this one, what if I use the shadow to kind of hook up into this area? Am I avoiding horizontals and verticals? Yes. Am I avoiding dead center? Yes. That means you're not putting anything vitally important dead center. So it's not like a target. In fact, I don't even think this one is really using dead center all that much because it's center mass. And so what the eye actually does is it starts going around the edges of it, reading it like something on a map. Okay, let me add a little bit more space here. All right, what if I find the most unusual viewpoint I can? One that's looking right at the bottom of it. It's got this kind of triangular base. It's all bumpy. And then way back behind, it's got this little stem coming out. So I like that shape. It's got a lot of diagonals, a lot of complexity, curves inside. Some of your objects are horizontal and vertical. So you want to play with the angles, looking from above, looking from below, making it a three-quarter view. Don't think there's only one way to look at your objects. And then let's see, if I compose that like so, is that interesting? Right on the center, close, no, maybe not. Maybe I want to go more vertical with it. try different boxes around it, try different angles. That's why thumbnailing is important. Ultimately, maybe I want it to be something like this. Oops. I forgot I'm on the background. So what do I think of a composition like this? 